Yes guys, welcome back to my channel. A revamped studio, not quite finished just yet, but welcome back to Warren. This is our reaction, so our Premier League predictions, 2022-2023. Let's get into the podcast. Let's go. Let's go. We're going to watch the podcast from last year. And then we're going to react to some of the clips. I've gone for all three newly promoted teams. I've gone Bournemouth in, in 20th, uh, Nottingham Forest in 19th and Fulham 18th. So it's interesting. I've got Forest at 20th, yeah. Bournemouth at 19th yeah. and I've got Southampton Ooh, at 18th. Okay. See, those weren't, mine weren't too far away. Well, so, so were yours, but you've got Fulham as a bit of a nightmare. Yeah, um, um, hopefully that's not a sign of things to come. But with the rest of them. I thought Bournemouth would go down. They, they actually did really well to survive. Mm -hmm. uh, no one expected them to survive. They posted something on TikTok and they were saying everyone predicted them to go down. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we weren't in that compilation though. So, yeah, I mean, like the Bournemouth social media team, what's going on? Well, I've got, I've ridden subscribers. My YouTube shorts, if you've not checked them out, you could check them out. Uh, but Bournemouth stayed up. They did quite well actually. They got 39 points. Yeah, they've done really well actually. I think yeah. Forrest did also quite well with the, the amount of players they were signing mm -hmm. as well. Um, but talk about Fulham. Uh, um, I don't think it was too outrageous to expect them to go back down again. Um, I, I think I said in a prediction video that it really was based around how Mitrovic did. And I think he was a lot better when he wasn't squaring up to refs and headbutting people. Yes. Um, he was much better this year than he was previously. And I think that's what a lot of their season was built around. I agree. But um, out of the six uh, teams to go down that both of us predicted... I got the only one that was correct, which was Southampton. Yeah. And I thought they finished 18th, but they were abysmal. Yeah. But yeah. if you look at their record uh, against their top half teams, it was so much better than the teams that they played in the bottom half. It was a bit of a weird season for them. Yeah, yeah. I saw this actually. They were, I think, out of those kind of bottom six, I think they were bottom. Games against the bottom yeah. six, they were bottom. So, yeah, that's what's got them down. What be interesting to see what happens with them now, to be fair. Their transfer business may seem kind of smart, but at the same time, they've got players like Bazunu mm -hmm. and signing players that will not get the chance, at, for example, like Man City. Yeah. They had Broyer last year um, from Chelsea, yeah. but they've not like re-signed him or anything. So I'm thinking their transfer business, I know, again, I shouldn't focus on the transfer business because that could be a rookie error. Mm -hmm. And But I just think they've played their luck a little bit too much in the last few years. Yeah. So I do think Southampton will get relegated. And Bournemouth yeah. Prediction, right yeah, bang on, mate. I think that's a that's a fair point. They've ridden their luck over the last few years. I think um, as well the the players that they signed, they're good players. They're good young players. Like they signed Alcaraz in January. They got Lavia, yeah. Bazuni, like I yeah. said. And who who was it? Uh, Sulemana. He looked quite good. Yes, he did look against good against Liverpool on the weekend. But they didn't have any Premier League experience. They no. changed their manager twice as well. So they had three managers during the the season. Obviously, that's yeah. not good for them. Yeah. Uh, but I did get a prediction right in the relegation zone. So yeah. one nil to yeah. me. Yeah, one nil to you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Seventeenth, I've got Southampton. Oh, okay. So I I agree with you. I do think they're going to struggle. So where did you have Fulham? Uh, eighteen. I had Fulham. I've got Fulham seventeen. So we swapped them two. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's interesting. I think we both think they're going to struggle. Yeah. I think. Um, and then I've got Everton in sixteenth, uh, Brentford in 15th Leeds in 14th and then Villa in uh, no 14th. way we've got I've got Everton 16th Brentford 15th yeah. <laughs> Leeds in 14th <laughs> that's mad mixed isn't it so we agreed on a lot of it but mm. we agreed uh, both of us Leeds to stay up yeah and Leeds just defending was shocking horrendous the whole of the season um, they're they're just Elan Melia I thought he was up and coming keeper he made yeah. so many big mistakes they're just individually just not Premier League standard defenders, yeah. in my opinion. And again, I think a lot of Leeds' season result was, was based around Bamford as well. I remember there was the big game against Leicester. He had basically an open goal at the back post and missed. And you mm. think if, 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 if that goes in, that could be the difference, potentially getting an extra two, three points between them going down and them staying up. So both ends of the pitch, not good enough. So I had Southampton going down, but you yeah. had uh, Fulham going down. Yeah. That was still a bit of a mare from both of us because I, I really wanted Fulham to stay up and I thought they would stay up. But previous years when I predicted Brighton to go down twice in a row, um, I thought Fulham potentially would go down, but they stayed up and they did really, really well. 
But obviously, you predicted Fulham to go down, and it's the Mitrovic kind of thing as well. Yeah. So, as well, Brentford, as well, we thought they had second season syndrome. Yeah, we did. I think we said that in the video, that, that they're one of those teams that are probably primed for it. And obviously, they've proven us wrong. They, on the final day, could have got European football. Um, I mean, Thomas Frank's done an unbelievable job. It'll be interesting to see next year with Ivan Tony with his massive ban, what happens to them then. See if they but, get, a, get a striker. They've got Johan Wissa, who's uh, yeah. decent, but they've got Embuemo, who's their star man at the moment. Yeah, yeah. I, I think they'll still do well. I think they'll still do well next, next year, but of, way off, obviously. A couple that I've... Well, we both, I mean, Fulham, we've, we've had a couple that are way off yeah. already. So not a great start. But with Everton, uh, we both predicted they'd struggle, and they did struggle. We both predicted them to finish in 16th. Yeah. And they, they finished in 16th, right? I think so. I think so. I that think that finished, was at 16th, 17th. They finished in 16th, 17th. Uh, they stayed up with the skin of their teeth. I think they won't progress until Mashiri leaves the club, yeah. in my opinion. Well, they're going to their new stadium soon. Um, so I think if they did get relegated this year, the future of the club would have been in big, big problems. Yeah, um, it would have been I a think, catastrophe if they get relegated. I think now, Sean Dyche is probably the, the, the right manager to keep them level. It's basically another Burnley job. Yeah. It? For as long as he can, keep them up. I don't rate Frank Lampard. <laughs> um, yeah. I don't think he's good enough. Um, and the squad isn't good enough. Bang you were on. right. Frank bang Lampard, on. I think he's a terrible manager. Yeah, bang on. Not even just at Everton. I mean, at Chelsea, probably the worst Chelsea manager in history now, right? But you can't really blame him. He, they brought in so many players. At the start of the season, obviously, we had no idea players they would bring in. They brought in Sterling. I can't remember who else. Kula Bali they brought in. But I think those players that they brought in in January need more time to settle. Now, we're filming this the day after the Premier League has finished. Yeah. So it's announced today that Pochettino is now the new Man, uh, Man City. Is new the new Chelsea manager. Yeah. So what do you think about that? I, I think that's a. I think this this Chelsea team now is quite similar to what Tottenham was when Poch took over originally. Mm -hmm. um, they need a rebuild. They need a manager that's good with young players. Yeah. That's going to be given time, and I think they'll do that with him. I don't think he'll get them back up immediately. I think they'll be in a battle for top four. I think if they finish year. fifth, sixth, I think, I think that'd that's, be a good season for them. Yeah. They'll still be in danger, but I think if Bamford can stay fit for the season, yes, they've lost Phillips, yes, they've lost Rafinha, but I think they've replaced quite well. A uh, bit of a mix. Very bit quite, of a mix. Bit they, of a mix. They, I thought they did replace quite well with players like Tyler Adams coming in. Yeah. In Leipzig. Sinistera seemed okay. Weston McKenney, but Weston McKenney did not perform. No, at he wasn't all. good enough. They signed mm. uh, Jorginho Rutter in uh, in January, where they didn't even need a striker because they had Pignotto. Yeah. Well, he Some didn't play goal. enough either. Exactly. But they needed to strengthen at the back and yeah. a goalkeeper. When Sam Allardyce came in, he changed to Joel Robles instead of Melier. Yeah. They have Liam Cooper, Pascal Strzok made a horrendous mistake yesterday. Uh, who else have they got? They, they got... didn't have enough. I mean, Robin Cox probably well, the only one that, that could stay at that level. But Robin, I think Robin Cox poor as well. I saw him link with uh, Tottenham, actually. Wow. So yeah. there you go. That says a lot. <laughs> 13th, I've gone Villa. Right. Um, then 12th, I've gone Wolves. Right. And uh, 11th, I've gone Crystal Palace. <laughs> that's okay. mad. That's, how, how that's mad. Do do 13th, I've got Palace. Yeah. 12th, I've got Wolves. Yeah. <laughs> 11th, I've got Villa. <laughs> do you know what? This is. That's not, I mean, it shows actually we think quite similarly about football. We've done a lot of podcasts together. So we maybe, have. We've so maybe that's, together, that's, that's why. But Villa at the start of the season, they had Gerard, who also think is a dead I man. I think that's important is obviously when we make these predictions, one of the things that I don't think anyone that does predictions takes into account is if a manager's doing that bad, they'll get sacked and someone yeah. better comes in. If Villa had Gerard for the whole season, then they'd have finished either there or even well, lower. Yeah, they were when Unai Emery took over, they were in just the relegation out, zone. Well, the 19th, I think they were at 19th. And now they're going to be playing Europa Conference League football yeah, I mean, next year. Unai Emery's done an unbelievable job. He got a lot of stick at Arsenal. Um, He's saved his reputation entirely. I think, so yeah, I'm, I'm happy for him, actually. I mean, he's a really good manager. He deserves all the credit he's, he's getting. I think with Wolves, um, it's similar, isn't it? Because they changed their manager part of the way through the season. And then Lopetegui came in. Um, again, massive manager. Big, big name. They're starting to get... Well, not starting, but Premier League has got a lot of massive managers now. Yeah. Lopetegui's managed Spain and Real Madrid. Unai Emery's Arsenal and Villarreal. Yeah. Uh, but Palace, they had Vieira at the start of the season. They weren't scoring any goals under him. But then Roy Hodgson took over, just talked me through. When, Do you know uh, what? I think this is incredibly harsh on Patrick Vieira. Um, because the run of games that he was in charge for was like City, Chelsea, yeah. Arsenal, Tottenham. 
Liverpool. And then Roy Hodgson came in for the last few games of the season, the last eight or ten games, and that was Palace's easy run. Yeah. I think it's harsh on Vieira because Roy Hodgson's going to get all of the credit for keeping them up. I think Vieira would have as well. Yeah, I um, agree, yeah. But, but I think Eze, Elise, uh, they're not so reliant on Zaha anymore. No, but he might go in the summer. Yeah, he, he's on a free. He might go on a free. But Eze has performed so well for them. Yeah, and uh, he's he's a star in the making. Oh, for sure, for sure. Better than Saka. No, I'm joking. He's not. Yeah, not getting any, <laughs> any no nibbles from me. <laughs> I think the players will see that through. Okay. Rather than Gerard, I think Gerard will be the first manager to go. I don't know if he'll be the first to go, but I reckon he will go. He won't finish. So I was right. Gerard obviously he wasn't the first one to go. Yeah, who was it? It was uh, Scott Parker for Bournemouth, who managed Club Bruges yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is a, a club managing Club Bruges is a very weird one. And, and he, he was horrible. In sacked off like eight well. games or yeah. something. But uh, Gerard, as I said before, I think he's not. He's I think he's leveled to with Frank Lampard as equally bad managers. Oh yeah, for sure. For sure. I think Patrick Vieira's. Won the battle of those. Yeah, hundred percent. Sure. And uh, Gerard, if Gerard was still again in charge of Villa, Villa wouldn't be nowhere near the European yeah, spots. No I think it will be a, a very up and down year. I think they're going to get some brilliant results, and then I think at the same time they're going to get you know some some absolute horrible results. I would back one of the promoted teams to beat them, and then soon after they'll go and beat one of the big six. So, Wolves. Um, I don't think they were as good as they have been in previous years. I don't think. I mean, obviously. Last game of the season was was yesterday. Yeah. Arsenal smashed them. Yeah, I don't think they've been as dangerous this year as they have been in previous years. I think they're changing now to a four at the back. There was yeah. Bruno Large in charge, yeah. and Lopetegui took over. Then they started. They bought Diego Costa on a free, which I thought was a poor decision. Yeah, um, he's finished at this kind of level. He's not really scoring, not doing doing too much. No, but Wolves had just like a meh season. And, they just uh, couldn't get anything going going forward. Yeah. I remember at the start of the year. In fantasy football, everyone had Pedro Neto. Yeah, he got injured. And he, did, he, did, he got injured, didn't do anything. And that was the story of their season, really. Mm. Brighton. 10th Brighton. I've got West Ham in 9th and uh, Leicester in 8th. That's crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. Because I've got Leicester in 10th, yeah. Brighton in 9th, yeah. and West Ham in 8th. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Leicester were very. Everyone was very far well, off of Leicester. That's the thing is, I don't think any of our predictions that we've got here so far, none of them are completely out there. You can see this happening. Obviously, we saw it happening at the start of the season. Yeah. Uh, no one expected Leicester to go down. They've got so many players leaving on a free contract. That I feel like I did in my keep sell bench series. Like Madison will leave, oh, Tillemans sure. will leave, yeah. Evans is left. I think the key thing was Casper uh, Schmeichel leaving last year. Didn't replace him. Uh, he's a leader. He's a quality keeper, and they just left it. I think they'd have got even if they'd got an extra three points off of a better keeper than Danny Ward, they'd yeah. have still been in the league. Yeah, and uh, Brighton, I predicted them to go down two years previously, uh, but Brighton this year, uh, under Potter at first, but I think the Zerbi has taken them to another level. Oh, for sure. I think, do you know what? I think if Potter had stayed at Brighton the entire time, I reckon we'd have been very, very close. Yeah. I think, as you say, De Zerbi completely has taken them onto a whole different level. Um, the players individually, the system that he plays. I don't think there's anything there that's way, way off. I mean, obviously, mm. less than we were, but loads of people. So. As well with West Ham, every time they qualify for Europe, they do really badly the season after yeah. in the league. I really take that. In, I need to walk by. I, need to say well, I mean, as a West Ham fan, I'm sure any West Ham fans that are watching here can let us know, obviously, in the comments. But yeah. if you were offered at the start of the year where you finished in the league and then potentially winning a European final, yeah. I'm sure they'd have taken it. So. 100%. Because I really like their business. Uh, even last season, during the season, getting Bruno Gimaraes in, in in January was brilliant. I think he's one of the best players outside of the top six. I think he is one. Yeah, Defo, he's one like, of the best. He's 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 so good. Uh, Nick Pope, I'm a big fan. Um, he just he will win them points on his own. They've got reliable signings like Matt Target, who will just put in a solid seven out of ten every week. Um, I, I really like their business. So Newcastle, we were well. You were correct about Newcastle because uh, the business was very smart from them. Oh, for sure. I mean, they've. I think apart from Isaac, they've not spent huge money on, mm. on on a single player. They've signed kind of quite reliable Premier League players, Dan Burn, Nick Pope. Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously they have added some big players to that, but a lot of this actually has come from Eddie Howe and his man management and. Getting performances out of people like Almiron and Jacob Murphy. And yeah, he, I don't crazy. know how I don't know how he is still playing for Newcastle at the level he is. Eddie Howe yeah. is squeezing 
literally the most amount of talent that you can out of yeah, players I mean, like that. He's taken on Joe Linton, who couldn't buy a goal up front, put him into centre midfield, and he looks like a world beater. Yeah. I mean, it's unbelievable. He just got called up to the Brazil squad for the first yeah, time as well. Like, so anyone, this, He's playing football manager in real life. Yeah, Eddie Howe deserves fair play. so much uh, respect. Well done, Eddie Howe. Man United in sixth. Yep. And Chelsea in fourth. Yeah. So, so fourth, fifth, not fourth. Chelsea in fifth. Chelsea in fifth, yeah, yeah. same. So, so Man United, I predicted six because I didn't want to get too cocky. Or yeah. uh, obviously, I wanted them to finish in top four. Yeah, for sure. Of but uh, the first game, I can't remember who was out against, but then we played Brent, Brentford. No, Brentford was the second game. It was Brighton the first game, I think. Brentford the second game. And we got this was just before the the Brentford game. We lost four nil. Mm-hmm. So uh, obviously, things weren't looking great at the start of the season. Yeah. And then we, uh, Ronaldo was trying to pick up us as well. Yeah, yeah. And then... Uh, it feels like a long season. It does. It? It's with the World Cup in there as yeah, well. Yeah. We did a World Cup podcast here and there. Um, but I thought United did well to finish in third uh, behind, obviously, the top two to, and to get back into the Champions League. Uh, but moving on to Chelsea, obviously... Again, it's similar to Leicester, isn't it? No one, I don't think anyone could have possibly predicted Chelsea to have done this if, bad. If we predicted Chelsea to be 12th, we'd be crucified. Oh, for sure. 100%. Right. The comments and they could have gone <coughs> trending left, right, and centre. Maybe we should do that next yeah, year. Yeah, maybe. Get you, some, maybe uh, get you some, some more, some wider reach. Hopefully. But, yeah, I don't think anyone could have predicted Chelsea to do that bad. It's probably their worst year. It's definitely their worst year in Premier League history. Yeah, 100%. And the money they spent, that's embarrassing. <laughs> yeah. It's the same old rubbish. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's the same old yeah. rubbish with Man United. Like, how are McFred starting still yeah. in 2022, 23? Obviously, I didn't know Casemiro was coming in. Yeah, Ca- true. Casemiro... The thing is, there's some some of this could change based on transfers. Yeah, exactly. And he's a he's a game changer. I love Casemiro like bulldog. He's, do you know what this year? What he surprised me with? How many goals he scored? Yeah, I know. Not with the yellow cards though. He's got so well, he, he suspended a lot. He's a walking, talking yellow <laughs> card, mate. That's what he is. Business that United have done. I think they've overpaid for Martinez. He, let's see. He could be a good a good deal, but he was Martinez. I love. Yeah, I love Martinez. Like at the World Cup, he's it he was great as well. We're coming off yeah. the bench for Argentina. He's just so calm and composed on the ball compared to what we had last year with Maguire mm-hmm. and Lindelof. I do still rate Lindelof to be fair, but not starting ahead of obviously Martinez. Yeah, I, I mean, I think it was obviously it was a lot of money for him, and there were obviously big question marks about his height and stuff like that. But he's proven everyone wrong, so I'm not afraid to hold my hand up and say <laughs> fair play. He's a big quality defender. Fourth to third, fourth and third. Sorry. Who have you got? I've got Arsenal in fourth. Yeah, me too. Um, I just think that I've got Tottenham in third. Yeah. And I think that what Tottenham have done, it's the manager for me. I don't think, everyone's talking about Tottenham's window being amazing. I think Arsenal have had a better window than Tottenham. Spot on. I've never been so happy to be wrong in my life. Well, you talk about Arsenal because I've got my, uh, my, my opinions about Arsenal as well. I mean, what a year, man. Honestly, what a season. I mean, this is this this is proof that whatever predictions people had about Arsenal at the start of the year, most people didn't even see Arsenal come in top four. And then at the end of the season, people want to talk about bottling stuff. I'm not subscribing to any of that rubbish. Nah, you, I'm not subscribing you have to that. To, people, can, people can talk about how many days Arsenal spent top. The only reason we were top for so long is because of the way that the fixtures panned out. City had games in hand on us for most of the season, which if they won they would have overtaken us at basically any point. That's what eventually happened, but mm-hmm. it just took so long for them to play their games in hand. I hear you, you but know. I understand that. But if you're title contenders, and which you, uh, to be fair, I thought Arsenal finished fourth as well, obviously it's mm-hmm. on, the, on the screen there. But you you guys are eight points clear with not two, it was like eight, nine games to go. Or was it more than that at the time when you, when, you had, when you were eight points clear? Something like that, yeah. But yeah, eight points clear at the top, you can't be bottling that. I wouldn't say we bottled that. Eight point, being eight points clear then, City have two games in hand and we still have to play them away. That in itself means they overtake us. You can't call that a bottle because if you lose one game, all of a sudden you bottled it. If we went on a run of losing a ton of games, absolutely 100%. Yeah, but you went on the run of drawing to like Southampton. It didn't matter. Because if, to point, West if we won those games... Drawing to Liverpool when you're 2-0 up. If we won those games and City won all of their games, we would have still been second on goal difference. So it literally wouldn't make a difference. I, I, I disagree. I, I can't I, have it. Obviously, as a United fan, this season you can't relate. 
You were I never can't, up there we, in we, the conversation. We've won a trophy. You haven't you won anything. You were never in that conversation. We've had a better season than you. Get out. Because we've won a trophy. You won the Mickey Mouse you've Cup. Won. No one you've... cares. You're going to get smashed in the FA Cup you've won. final. No, but you've won and no the, trophies. The Mickey Mouse Cup really... that all of a sudden, now you care about. No. If you'd have lost that, the conversation would have been, we no. don't care about no. that rubbish competition. No, it wasn't. no, it's not. A trophy's a trophy, yeah? It's like well, so next year when you win the Community Shield, all of a no, sudden that's no, going to matter as well. I've never say that. I've never said that about the Community Shield. But we've won a trophy, yeah, and you finished second after being on top of the league for so long, bottling eight points. Obviously, you're saying you're finishing fourth. You did finish in the top four, so you were right. Well done. Um, but obviously, you're challenging for the league. Eight points clear. You're losing, but like eight points, so there's a sixteen point gap difference at some point. And we've won only five, and yeah. Well, whatever. <laughs> and we've won a trophy. So we're going to leave it there because this podcast will last forever if we keep arguing Yeah, we'd go back and forth all day on this. All day. And have a really good season. I do. Th- yeah, they'll have a good year. Do you know what it will be with Tottenham is if they can win a cup competition, that'll be it for them. Yeah. That'll be their big thing. Yeah, Spurs are dead. So dead. And, and again, I've never been so happy to be wrong. I mean, Conte, if Spurs can't win anything or have any sort of success after having Ooh. peak Pochettino, Mourinho... Conte, they're finished. And if they've got Kane as well, he's called 30 Premier League goals and they finished eight. finished. Kane had the best season of his career Yeah, in the worst Tottenham team for years. Nothing. He scored 30 goals two seasons in a row. And they've they're done finished. Absolutely nothing. They are finished. So Kane, please come to United. Go anywhere, man. Come go, to United. Literally, go anywhere. <laughs> go get out while you still can. Yeah. yeah. That'll be their big thing. If they come third and they don't win anything... Then I'll be interested to see what Conte does. I have City winning the league. I have Liverpool winning the league. Interesting. So probably the biggest choice. Yeah, I had, I had a bit of a mare. Uh, Liverpool finished fifth, which again, I'm so happy about because I hate Liverpool. And when Liverpool finished fifth, and when Salah wrote that emotional piece on Instagram, that was weird, I was, isn't it? Yeah, I thought that was very peculiar. It was so it's like a chat GPT created <laughs> apology. It was it's so like, weird. Please, can you write this? Like so, Victor and each yeah, of back yeah, in the yeah, day. Yeah, so weird. But um, obviously, Liverpool did not win the league and they finished fifth. Mm. But well, I'm, I'm very happy about that because they beat us 7 0 at Anfield. That's a low point, isn't it? But we finished above them and yeah. we're in the Champions League and yeah. they're not. So, and obviously, you've got Man City to win the league, which. Uh, yeah, which I mean, which happened, and they're just a machine. I think once they got going, and they seem to do it every year now. When they get going in February onwards, unstoppable. I think it's 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 a it's a it's a crime to bet against City. It is to win the league. Yeah, I mean, they could do the treble this year. I, I guess as a United oh, fan, God. you must hate the thought of that. Come on, Inter Milan, look, Lukaku, Damian, Mikatari are going to do it for, for <laughs> the Man United, yeah, and yeah. then hopefully, oh, I think we'll lose to to Man City in the final, but. It's a one-off. You never know. You never know. Um, I'm not going to place too much on a new signing. Okay. Uh, I'm going to stick with a tried and trusted Salah. Mo Salah is going to do it again. Yeah, I was going to choose Salah, but I've gone for Kane because I think um, Spurs will finish third. I was close. You were close. I think Kane was second, and I think Salah was fourth, maybe. Yeah. So we did not too so bad, but terrible. obviously we 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 put. Previously, I put Lukaku. Yeah, it was um, the reverse of what happened last yeah, year. Yeah, so I need to back Haaland this year, next year. But obviously, I don't want to back Haaland. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Haaland obviously come in, smashed it, scored yeah. so many hat tricks. Yeah. Uh, we, we just basically, Lukaku just scared us. Yeah. We got a we got... Le- big striker who's left footed. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> Overachievers. Purely based on the squad that they've got, I'm going to go with Brighton. Um, I think the squad they've got are a team that should be finishing 15th and below. <laughs> yeah. um, but because of the manager they've got and the system that they've got, I think, as I said, top 10 is achievable. So I think that's why they'll overachieve. I've gone with Fulham because everyone's predicting them to get relegated. Yeah. <laughs> so Brighton did so well, uh, obviously qualifying for Europe. Yeah. Uh, you said that and obviously I said Fulham. So we both did teams that did overachieve in the end because obviously... Yeah, and- Surprising teams. So basically, just cut that into a YouTube short. Don't show anything else, and then we look like geniuses. Love that. Job done. Ten Hag is supposed to be the chosen one, just like Ranić was the chosen <laughs> one, and Oli Gunnar Solskjaer was the chosen one. I just think they should be doing better than they are. I've got United, but I put United slash Everton because the expect. Expe- that's, that's good. That's good to be fair. Come on, I, Everton. You, you picked two. You picked two. Yeah, I did. But Everton's a good shout. But, to be fair. Yeah, Everton. Um, obviously, they're always underachieved. All like. 
They're a massive club. They should be. They should be competing for European spots. They really. should be, and that's why they spent money. That's where they want to be, but it's just not gone. Well, yeah, I categorise this in my head as how important will this person be to their team? Yeah. And I think Sven Botman. Really? Yeah. Interesting. Because if you see the Newcastle centre halves, they've got Cher, who's not bad. They've got Lascelles, who's not great. Um, Fernandez, who's not good either. Yeah. And Botman is a huge upgrade, and he will surely bring the level of the person playing next to him up. So yeah, I was I was pretty spot on with that. Like yeah, he did bring the, he did bring level shares level up. Did and the whole of defence uh, never expected anything from Dan Byrne, but he did really well. Yeah, as well. Um, but I, I think I got that pretty spot on with uh, Sven Botman. He was a bit shaky when they were conceding a few goals. Yeah, but that that was a rogue pick. I think that's the that's that's the smart thing with your pick there. It wasn't an obvious one. So fair play, Ali. Fair play. I'll give you that. I'll give you Thank that. you, mate. I've gone with Jesus. Uh, maybe there's some bias. I think similar similar idea to you. Mm. Who will make the biggest difference? Yes, Haaland is going to be great. Nunes is going to be yeah. great. But those attacks are already insane. Yeah. The Arsenal attack last year was pretty toothless. Um, yeah, Jesus did bring the level up. Yeah. Until he got injured, unfortunately. I feel you would have been closer to City if he wasn't. Yeah, that, that was the thing is, before the World Cup, he was one of the best players in the league. And our yeah. attack was so free-flowing and we were on absolute fire. And then okay, Nketiah stepped in and did well, but he's not the same type of player. So we were always going to struggle after that. Um, at, at one point, I wanted Arsenal to win the D. Then I realised how many friends I have that are Arsenal fans and I didn't want that to happen. Yeah, but then, then it was City to win the league and yeah. then it's, it's not ideal either. So again, with Man United not winning the league, it's just lose lose every year. Oh, every year, yeah. Unless like Newcastle win, I don't care. Yeah. First signing again in my head, I categorise this of where this person should be playing at what level, and I've gone Lingard. Have you agreed? Yeah. Yeah, agreed. Well, like he's at, he's gone from he could have gone to West Ham and had European football, but he's gone to Forest, who we've predicted to go down. Yeah. So, so Lingard didn't even score any goals in the league. I don't even. I don't remember him playing post yeah. Christmas. Yeah, I might be wrong. He might have done. I genuinely. Do, he's just so anonymous. Yeah. I don't remember him playing. Like, Forrest did really well actually to stay up. Yeah, I can't believe they brought in Kalor Navas. That what a signing! That's by the way. crazy. Like, like he's one of those game changing signings. That like they Felipe made. as well. Felipe uh, was class. Danilo. Danilo and Morgan Gibbs White was their star yeah. player for them. Lingard yeah. anonymous. I think spot on that 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 prediction. So that's the end of the video and our Premier League prediction reaction has come to an end. If you did enjoy that video with myself and Warren reacting to our last year's predictions, the season just gone, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to like, subscribe and don't forget, I'll see you later for more.